to go. You back. think so? Back. Nah, you really back, think so? Back, 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 back. No, no, I'm no, no. I said probably. This video, I'm gonna go over some ideas that will help you survive against bigger people. This is not a end all, be all solution for your problems with brute force, but this will help you survive longer. And if you get good at the ideas we go over in this video, I think you're not going to have a problem with most big people later on into your jujitsu journey. I'm going to give you guys the breakdown. I'm about five foot seven, 160 pounds, so about 171 centimeters, uh, 72 kilos. He's like 5'11", and he's about uh, 77 kilos or 170. He's about five foot eight, and he's about 200 something pounds. Five foot nine, 200, I don't know, 15 pounds or something. Six foot one, 260 to 70 pounds. A body movement tip that's gonna help you when you're training with bigger people is making yourself smaller. So you have to play to your size advantage. If you're small, make yourself smaller. There are many, many advantages and benefits to doing so. And what I mean by that is basically taking your knees, bringing them into your chest, and tucking your head into your opponent. Knees to chest allows you to create a stronger frame because look at my elbow to knee connection, and it allows you to deny inside position easier and deny hip access easier because you minimize the amount of space your opponent has to work with. In game number one, your objective is going to be to keep your opponent away from you and never let them get chest to chest. Their objective is going to be to get chest to chest, so that means they have to pass your knees and your hips in order to get there. I want you to pay attention to how I prevent my opponent from passing my knees and hips. Look at my right hand and my left hand. Look at where I'm pushing my opponent. I'm pushing at the end of the lever. I'm bringing my knees into my chest, and I'm making sure my knees and feet face my opponent no matter what. Knees to chest and make yourself into a tiny ball. Think about it. Remember, your only job is to stay within the rules of the game. You can do anything you want. You have creative freedom over the process, but you need to stay within the rules of the game. As my opponent is about to pass my hips, look at my left and right hand. Look at where I'm pushing. And then I want you to pay attention to how I bring my knees into my chest. I bring my knees into my chest differently than I did before, but because I still stayed within the rules of the game, it works. And remember, even if you lose this game, which is likely to happen, it's okay. That's just how it is. That's what it takes to build real skills. Especially when your opponent is 100 pounds or 50 kilos heavier than you, failure is to be expected. In game number two, you're going to start from a seated alignment. Your opponent's going to start standing. Your job is going to be to destabilize them and get them to post hands on the mat fall to their ass, or get them hopping on one foot. And I don't know if you've noticed this, but I'm fighting at end of levers. I have inside positioning. I might try to get an underhook. And we're going to talk more about these concepts in part two and part three of this series. By the way, do you see that? Feet and knees, baby. Feet and knees like you hear me talk about on my Instagram a lot. I always try to stay attached and attack at feet and knees whenever I can if they're within my arm's reach. Game number three is going to be like game number two, but instead we're starting in a half guard alignment. My goal is to destabilize my opponent to their hips or their hands or get chest to back. And the top player's job is going to be to free their knee any way they can and get chest to chest. And do you see how I curled myself into a ball in this clip and the last few clips? Remember, you also want to test and try out curling yourself into a ball. By the way, do you see how Dennis grabs my right wrist? Why do I let him grab at end of levers if I'm never supposed to let him grab at end of levers? Why do you think I do that? Let me know in the comments below. In this game, the bottom player is going to start with an underhook and try to destabilize the person to their hands or hips or get chest to back. Top player is going to try to flatten them out and get chest to chest. Look at my right hand, knees and feet, remember? And look at my knees coming into my chest. Underhooks allow us to access the hips, and accessing the hips allows us to destabilize our opponent easier. Pay attention to Sasha's body as he's being destabilized. That's what it looks like in real time. 
By the way, why do you think I pummel my right foot on the inside of that knee? I take inside positioning on his left knee. Why do you think I did that? I'm also on my side. Cough, cough, Instagram on my side. Same game, but pay attention to how I curl myself into a ball. Look at my hand positioning and look at Sasha trying to control me at end of levers. He's trying to control me at my head and I never let him control me at my head. Now Sasha becomes smart. He uses a different grip to try to control me at my head. And now I'm a little bit more cautious because it's harder to get out of this. But you see how I got him to post hands? If your opponent's controlling at end of levers, you destabilize to get them to post hands to free up your head. And then you can work your way towards an underhook. I don't know if you saw that, but please replay it if you need to see it again. And the person you play these games with is going to be smart. They're going to catch on to you eventually. So sometimes you won't be able to destabilize properly and you won't be able to get chest to back. If anything happens like that, your goal is going to be to get to a seated position. By the way, look at the placement of my right foot and replay that part. A lot of big guys like to attack your knees, drop their chest down to flatten your knees out in order to access your hips and walk around the side. Now, if you know that they're trying to access your knees and use their weight to their advantage, every time you feel them either wrap their arm around the back of your knee or connect their chest to your knees, you need to start sucking your knees in to your chest. Now, as you see, it's the same motion. I curl myself into a smaller ball and let's see what happens. Knees to chest works because you're never giving your opponent full control over your knees. Remember, the knees and the hips are joints that work in synergy. If they control your knees, they control your hips to a certain extent as well. So by bringing your knees into your chest, you change the amount of leverage they have on your knees. As a result, also changing the amount of leverage they have on your hips. And then when you start attacking and pushing at end of levers their head, you're able to make more space for your knees to be completely free. So you can play this game from that open guard alignment where the knees are kissing, or you can play it from this alignment where you're on your side and the knees are kissing. Your objective is going to be to free the knee line. Your opponent's objective is going to be to get chest to chest or get chest to back. When it comes to lower body, below the waist, no matter what your opponent's trying to do, whether it's passing your guard or putting you in a leg lock, their whole goal is to immobilize and control you at feet and knees to access the hips because the feet and knees are the gateways to the hips. These games will help you build the skills of defending and attacking at feet and knees. We never let our opponents attack us or control us at those joints because we know if we let them control us at those joints their chances of getting to the hips increase drastically same motion when bigger guys always try to take my back whether in a scramble or not in a scramble i like to bring my knees into my chest to make myself smaller and obviously i'm still protecting against the strangulation but let's see what happens the reason why knees to chest works in this scenario is because it makes it much harder for our opponent to access our hips. That's the point of their hooks or their feet. Their feet are trying to access and control us at the hips. By bringing our knees into our chest, we reduce the amount of space they have to work with and make it harder. By the way, do you see my left elbow? Do you see how that elbow also helps us prevent them from getting their feet in? And remember, as long as we always focus on defending that strangle hand, we never have to worry about the threat of an RNC because it is not there if we're controlling them and have top position over the end of the lever or their knuckle line. Now, if they're much bigger and more skilled than us, we may not be able to fully escape, but we can bide some time in order to force them into turtle. I have homework for you. You're going to rewatch Gordon's roles with the world's strongest men, and you're going to count how many times he gets inside position, how many times he never lets his opponent control at end of levers, how he gets to his side, how he gets his knees into his chest, how he gets an underhook, how he uses his feet like hands. You're going to count how many times he implements these concepts, and then you're going to try to copy him and implement it at your own gym. I also want you to pay attention to the pattern recognition. He always falls back into the same old positions. I wonder why.
as he escapes side control, pay attention to his footwork. I know a lot of you get stuck here with bigger people, and it may take a longer time to get out, but you need to pay attention to this man's footwork. Same position, another big ass guy, and all I see is inside positioning, destabilization, and using his feet like hands. What do you see? Thank you for watching part one of this series, but there's still three more parts. And if you want access to those, you have to sign up for the newsletter below. That's the only place you're going to get them.